I love seeing optimizations to the kernel, especially when it's applied and tested on hardware. So this here is a commit called XFAT reduce block requests when zeroing a cluster. And it gives us an improvement of, of around 700% when it comes to zeroing out a request. So let's talk about this commit a little. This is coming from a talented developer named, and I'll get this wrong, using Mo, which can, which improves the times of zeroing out clusters. If we look here, we have our cluster sizes, which the tests were performed on, and a before and after, including the improvement, which is the most important part. Now we'll go through this math and why we can call this almost a 700% improvement in a little bit, but let's talk about what this says. So if direct sync is enabled in the kernel, zeroing a cluster, submitting and submitting sector by sector will generate a lot of block requests. This is important, which will cause block devices not to fully perform to their best ability. So how to improve this? Well, it says this commit makes the sectors in a cluster to be submitted in at, at once. Some translation difficulties here, but not a big deal. What this does is reduces the number of block requests and allows the device to operate at peak performance. How was the test done? Well, it's mentioned here, basically they create a thousand directories on an SD card with the various cluster sizes labeled below 64 K kilobytes, 128 kilobytes and 256 kilobyte cluster sizes. So from my understanding, they basically, instead of writing blocks, which can be arbitrary sized units of data. So we'll just put a question mark there. They're writing clusters out, which they're defining to some value we'll call X. So I think of them as creating a group of these blocks and writing directly to the storage device, in this case, an SD card in clusters instead. And as mentioned at the beginning, it's for XFAT systems. So what does that mean? Well, XFAT is a file system that was given to us by Microsoft and was optimized for flash memory, such as what is on an SD card. And that's exactly what they're using here or a USB flash drive. So pushing these sectors into a cluster and then writing to them at once gave us these improvements of on a 64 kilobyte cluster size, we have a 73.8% improvement on 128 kilobytes, almost an 80% improvement. And on a 256 K byte cluster size, we have an 85.4% improvement. How did they come up with this number? Well, if you take the seconds, which we have here before and after, we can say that one minute and 39 seconds is roughly 99 seconds. So before it took 11 minutes and 22 seconds, that's roughly equivalent to 682 seconds. If we divide those two out, so 99 over 682, we get a value of around 0.145. And if we subtract from one, that gives us our improvement. So basically we're saying out of 100%, what is our improvement? And that roughly comes out to 85%. A different way of looking at this is what if we took and said it used to take 682 seconds before the commit. And now it's taking only 99 seconds to produce those thousand directories. Well, that's equivalent to 6.88. If we multiply that by hundred, guess what? That's almost a 680% faster time. Quite amazing what they've done here. So another thing that's important is what kind of hardware that they tested this on. Well, we'll check that out here in a moment. It was an IMX 6Q Saber Lite. This is a CPU that supports around 800 megahertz with what seems to be four cores. And the memory was one gig DDR3 RAM. And the SD card was an eight gig class four SD card. I wanna talk about the hardware because a lot of you are probably unfamiliar with what kind of hardware this is because it's a development board that they tested this on. So let's check out what that development board looks like. And if you're ready to start learning about Linux today, check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's a link below. So here's the board on the NXP website, a developer of processors and plenty of eval boards. This is what they seem to be testing things on. And if we look down, we can look at some of the features, which can include a IMX6 quad processor up to one gigabytes of DDR. SDR RAM. So this wasn't quite tested on a full fledged desktop because it doesn't really benefit a full fledged desktop. It's more for SD cards as stated in the commit. And what they accomplished was 
reducing the amount of block re requests by, by grouping those requests into clusters, effectively zeroing out more things at once. So what kind of processor is this here? I know it says IMX6 quad, but I think this explains it a little bit better. The IMX6 Q featuring quad ARM Cortex A9 cores, meaning there's four Cortex A9 cores on here. These are ARM based processors and you can see the various different subsystems and peripherals that the processor supports. And basically this is a really nice low end, low budget processor that supports 3D graphics, high definition video, and it's great if you want something minimal for your production environments. And for those of you that are interested, here is the commit that actually gave us the performance boost. If you want to check it out, I'll make sure to post it in the description below. It's always wonderful to see people committing themselves and giving us improvements to the kernel. Even if we can't see those improvements necessarily on our own systems, it's great to see intelligent people working on open source projects for us, like the Linux kernel. Make sure you thank a developer today for their contributions. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.